Hey everybody out there in the Y.O. universe, this is Survivor 2002 coming at you again from the Secret Lair in Virginia. It's Tuesday, March 17th, 2009, and you know what that means. It's another American Idol week kicking off. Uh, this week, I guess you heard, is Grand Ole Opry. Yeehaw! So, <laughs> I heard about that last week and sort of went, oh, good grief. What is this week going to sound like? Now we know. So without too much preamble, let's just kick off the list here and the notes that I made during the show. Okay, first off, we have Big Hollywood, Michael Sarver doing Ain't Going Down, Garth Brooks. First of all, my biggest problem is Mike. Come on. I'm a 50-year-old dude, okay? I've got bad knees. I've got a rapidly worsening back, and when I get up in the morning, it's uh, a carefully choreographed affair, I would have to say. I mean, it, without Advil and Tylenol, I don't know what the hell I'd be doing. But that's my excuse. I don't know what your excuse is. I have seen performances that were more animated <laughs> from... Wax figures at Madame Tussauds. Garth wrote this song as, and not an anthem, but it's to it's to country what some songs by like Ario Speedwagon or Def Leppard are to to rock. It's arena country, for lack of a better description. This is a song that gives you an opportunity to kick up your heels, act a little crazy, act a little stupid, and really bring out the kind of personality that the song reflects. Garth knew that when he wrote it. When you see him perform it, it's it's lively. It's great. It's entertaining. But man, you were moving around that stage like like me in the morning, or worse, somebody who just filled up their depends and they're trying very hard not to get a little, shall we say, squishy about it. TMI, I know, but but that's how Michael was moving around. Almost no real use to the stage whatsoever. And vocally, yeah, it was okay. He did remember all the lyrics as far as I could tell. And it wasn't an unpleasant rendition, but if you really want to take the opportunity to seize the reins and show off your personality, it didn't happen with this song. So I don't want to say you're in trouble. I think that your voting block will keep you in for at least another week. But yeah, after this week, you need to step it up. And I don't know if you won't have a problem with that, because this should have been your week. But anyway, moving on. Allison Irohita, Patty Loveless's Blame It On Your Heart. Great performance. I mean, the girl is just amazing. To be at that age and have that kind of poise, the maturity in her voice she has, and that delivery. I mean, it was... Not better than the original, but it was really, really close to it. I mean, all the qualities that make the original such a great two-step song are there. So, Allison, I think, is, is more than safe, so there's nothing to worry about there. Chris Allen, going back to Garth again with To Make You Feel My Love. Okay, I have not been a huge Chris Allen fan, and I'm also really thrown off by the fact, and Bear has pointed this out more than once, the resemblance he has to uh, Hal Sparks as Michael Novotny on Queer as Folk is just so distracting and was no more evident than tonight. I mean, it's like they could be twins. And he does look like Hal did in season one of the show. But trying not to compare it to, of course, Garth's rendition or Billy Joel's excellent, excellent cover, it was decent. Absolutely super powerfully remarkable? No, not really. But I would say that um, it's going to keep him there for another week. So that, I guess at this point, that's all that counts. Moving on. Lil with Martina McBride's Independence Day. Fantastic. Number one, because you pulled back on all the R&B shouting that people keep accusing him of doing. It's like, she's screaming and she's not singing. This time, you pulled all that back 
without sacrificing a lot of the richness of your voice. And um, I think you did a really great job on that because I didn't know what to expect when they talked about what you're going to be doing. I thought, oh no, Independence Day. You did a lot better job than I think people were, were going to give you credit for. Lil, I think you're safe this week. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Next. Adam Lambert with the Johnny Cash classic, Ring of Fire. Whoa. <laughs> what can you say? I think I'm going to start branding these kind of moments the Mandisa moments because this is that point in the competition where you got people who you think are going to be the front runners. And you're pretty confident that they're going to nail it every time and they're going to be consistent about it. But every so often, you have that one time and that one song where they open their mouths for, and from the first note to the last, you're like, really? <laughs> Seriously? Don't get me wrong. I think it was a very brave, daring choice. Dramatic, of course, and what else would we expect from Adam? But I also think that this was definitely the wrong week, dead wrong, to try something that experimental and just out of the box. And this is way out of the box. I think Randy described it as Nine Inch Nails trying to do country. No. It's a one-of-a-kind performance, and I will be surprised if it doesn't get Adam sent home tomorrow night. Seriously. If you don't think so, go watch it back. I had to rewind it and watch it back myself because I couldn't believe what I was seeing or hearing. And uh, this evening's mentor, by the way, was Randy Travis. And their meeting was interesting to say the least, but if you taped or DVR'd this, go back and watch it again. But yeah, I think of all the performances tonight, Adam probably stands the strongest chance of going home because of the fact that it is Grand Old Opry Week.